Hi everybody, this is Diane. As you can see, I still have a table full of lace in front of me. I'm working diligently on it. Um, but this is what I got accomplished yesterday. I took all of the cards that um, Celeste made and sent to me and wrapped lace around them. So they are full, this size and this size. I still have two little bundles of the tiny size and I'm going to use them for my cotton thread that I run through the wax and um, you know bind my journals with. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about this. So this drawer contains the polyester and nylon laces and my very narrow ones. I use the smaller, well I guess it's the medium size of um, the cards that Celeste made and put my narrow lace on them and then they were just kind of they wouldn't stay in there and I knew moving the drawer back and forth was just gonna shove them up into here and it would be a mess so I found this little box that actually is the bottom to this box that somebody I think I got those from somebody in a happy mail so that's a, a great size for that and then um, I did want to also tell you that for some of the cards you can see this is this is how they were shaped but you have a very limited space here and I have so many laces that I need <coughs> sorry I need to maximize my space so I cut some off and made this part a little longer on uh, some of the cards and also I think it will help make them so they don't get caught when I move the drawer I may have to do a little rearranging um, so that I don't think they can be so stuffed that they have to stand up straight because I don't think it would the drawer would close um, so I have to make sure that they can tip a little bit to the side lay down a little bit but basically this is my my lace of polyester and or nylon and I had to start using my regular, you know, flat cards, which is fine. I like them. And uh, finish out what I was doing. And I have some longer ones back here. Longer cards. And then these are some wider laces, and they didn't fit standing. Oh, maybe they do fit standing up. Okay. I like them standing up because I can tell at a glance what I have. It's the KonMari method, but I did this before I ever heard of the KonMari method. It just made sense. So, you know, don't judge me. I have so much lace. This is one drawer, and there is so much more. And I have Isla in a separate container, and I have different, different kinds of laces in different containers and different drawers. But... I like lace <laughs> and I probably should de-stash more of this but I'm not for now I did pull huh? some out I did and I'll probably do some more while I working on the rest so that drawer is pretty much set I think so I'm gonna set it out of my way I have two empty drawers but I have all this stuff in front of me and one drawer I didn't show you yesterday which is in the same unit is this one which is all very wide pieces so I also will have to go through this but probably not in this video I did do some more um, dividing while we're while I was getting ready for this video today all over here I have a big pile of crochet laces so I'm going to start putting them in a separate drawer because I was trying to figure out how I'm going to... Well, that drawer is full, so I have to start putting those in a separate drawer. This, I think, needs to go in that drawer, though. And I'm not sure about this one, what I'll do with that one. But this one can go in that drawer. So I'm going to just take one of my cards and wrap it around there. Um, oh, I didn't point out... Oh, that's because it's not in that drawer. 
I have my shaped laces here. So I think this will go with my shaped laces where I could just cut a section off and use it to embellish um, a cluster or a journal card, a pocket, hanging on a bulb pin. It's just one of the laces that I can cut into sections. So I wanted to keep them in one place and I have them all set. I have that and this one. And I have a lot of that one. Got the yellow and that one. These are just very small pieces. And then this one. So I'm going to put those in my next drawer that I'm starting in one section and one in the front corner so they're easy to find. Uh, I think I will work on the black to get that out of the way because there isn't a whole lot of it. Oh, I also wanted to mention these are shorter pieces. Um, and if they're the right length to fit in my lace boxes, they go in there. So this one has like extra special laces in it and the lid doesn't stay open. And this one just, it's kind of a tumbled mess because I root through it and pull things out. This just has normal lace. Not to say that it's not pretty, they're all pretty. Okay, so those are done. And I have these that go in my eyelet container. So here's my eyelet container. And I hang this off of a command hook on my wall. And I did destash this, believe it or not, but I like eyelet. And this is pretty full. I don't want to have more eyelet that then will fit in here. So I'm kind of pushing it, you know? And it gets hard to get things put away without um, messing up the laces when you, as you shove them down in there. So I'm trying to not use these hand cut cards because they don't look very nice. And I've been, with um, Celeste's cards that she gave me, I've been emptying a lot of these cards. These are, these came in packaging, of course. Seam binding, um, bias tape, stuff like that. Hem lace. That's a pretty small piece, but I love it. And this is a small piece also. So I don't like to wrap them this way around too much because it puts more creases in them. But these pieces are smaller, so I guess I have to. And you can get more on one card if you do it this way also. So I am separating my gathered laces from my flat laces, but all of the eyelet goes in here, whether it's gathered or flat. So here's a gathered one in a pale peach color. Ouch. Okay. Poked my finger. And then these, this one can go around a card, and that one can go around a card. This one I think I'll just put in my box. Oh yeah, I have another piece here, so this should fill this card up. This used to be a gathered one, but somebody took it apart. You can tell where it was gathered up here. And this is a little piece that'll go in my box. 
when I need just a small length of lace, I look in that box. Now, no more eyelet until I use some of this. Okay. Black. This is all I have of black, so I can deal with this quickly. This is the card that these laces came on, and I had ordered a bunch of different colors. But, um... I don't have that much of this one. It doesn't stay on that card very well, so I'm going to put it on a smaller card. I'm going to put it in the back row of that drawer that I'm using because I don't use black very often. I told you I was watching an old movie while I was winding the laces. This is really old and fragile and tearing. I think this would be great in a Halloween journal, but I don't do Halloween journals very often. Um, I had read a book a while back about Loretta, <coughs> Loretta Young. I had heard the name, but I don't think I ever saw any of her movies. I didn't know what she looked like, but I think I got this book at, you know, a thrift store or something for a dollar or something and I read it and learned a lot about her I knew nothing about her so I was curious about her movies <clears throat> so I actually rented from Netflix yes I still get physical DVDs from Netflix Billy said they're only in business just for me because I'm the only one that still gets them <clears throat> but uh, I got it was uh, two movies on one DVD with Loretta Young. One was called The Doctor Takes a Wife and the other one was um, A Night to Remember and they were comedies but you know I think they're from the 40s and they're just so um, over the top and cheesy but I enjoyed watching them and Loretta Young was a beautiful woman I don't even remember the leading men in either of those movies, who they were. They weren't names that I was very familiar with. I think I had heard of them, but not enough that I can even remember who they were right now. But I enjoyed those movies. My sister loves old movies. <clears throat> She's five years younger than me, and she loves Bing Crosby, Christmas uh, music, Frank Sinatra, and old movies, old black and white movies. And she loves the British TV shows too, like detective shows. There's quite a bit on this one. Maybe I'll wrap it this way. I think it's 11 o'clock now. Is that what that was? Yep, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to go take my grandson out for lunch today. They, uh, the boys have school on their computers. I think they're going to be able to go to a school next year. It's a Christian school. Um, they just haven't, because of COVID for one thing, but other reasons for the older boy. But Teddy is a very, very social person, and he really misses being in school. And I think uh, Adam said he was ready to go back to school. He was having anxiety issues. But he said he's ready, which is really awesome. So anyway, with not being able to go to school <clears throat> and being kept away from people during the pandemic and, and uh, they've had COVID in their house for a couple of times, it's just been really hard for him. And so I told his mother, he gets, he had a, has an early day today. He gets out at, gets done with school at 12 or 1230 on Thursdays. 
So I said I would pick him up and take him out for lunch. And he is very excited. He loves pancakes. They both do. So I'm going to take him to a diner, local diner, where he can get pancakes any time of day if that's what he wants. But I can't take Adam because he'll still be in school. But I'll do that for him by himself another time. He's 15. And I didn't know if he would even care, if he would want Grandma to pick him up and take him to lunch. But his mother said he would love it. She said he loves spending time with you. And if he doesn't see you that much, if he hasn't seen you in a while, he'll just say, I miss Grandma. Which warmed my heart. So of course I'm going to pick him up and take him out. And he loves pancakes. That's his favorite food. <laughs> so we'll go to the diner too. But I'm looking forward to some one-on-one -on -one time with Teddy. He's a character. He's 11. There's some black. This is just a short piece. Get this taken care of, and then we'll move on to the crochet or the gathered, because I don't have a lot of gathered lace either. This is oh, this isn't what I thought. Yes, it is. This is unique. It's very fragile, like that other one. It's you can see it's coming apart, but it's in these long sections, and I forget about it when I have it wound around here. You can't really see that that that's what it's like, but I think it's. It'll be re really cool in a shabby looking journal to embellish the edge of a page or something. I just need to remember that I have it. I'm not pulling on it tightly at all. I'm just kind of draping it so that I don't tear it. just have two more. Guess I'll go around. Oh, that's one of my hand cut ones. So is that one. I'll keep some of those hand cut ones just so I have some on hand in case I need something, you know, when I go to the flea market. And that takes care of the black. I'm going to put these in my box. This is all I have in gathered lace. I just want this wound lengthwise because it was very bulky. This isn't vintage. I probably got this at Hobby Lobby. So I just looked for a wider card. Most of the laces in these drawers are vintage because I've gotten them at flea markets. Some of them are antique. I would hazard a guess that that black 
really fragile one is in is an antique lace. And I'll keep the gathered ones at the back with the black, since I don't use gathered a lot. This one's really pretty and soft. I like this one because it's not stiff. Sometimes I think the gathered laces just stick out too much. It doesn't have a a casing or like a uh, bias tape cap at the top. It's just ruffled and you can see the edge. Most of them have some sort of a like this edge over the top. How come my Oh, I didn't change my battery. I was going to. And these two, these three, I will... Oh, these are gathered also. So I'm going to leave these on this card. And add this one. This one will fit here. So it's nice to have the gathered ones separate so I don't have to look through all of the kinds of lace when I'm looking for a specific type. I was I did talk about keep trying to keep my the ones that are symmetrical and the ones that have a flat edge and a shaped edge separate because I use them for different purposes also. But I didn't I'm not doing that. I think that would just be too much. I forgot to for one thing and then I just thought uh, it would just be difficult to try to keep those things separate and when I put things away I would probably not keep them separate you know so I might as well just not worry about it. I'm separating things to some degree And I know that I can cut off the top part that gathers the lace and then it would flatten out. But I just, and I, I would do that if I wanted to, but I just don't uh, often buy the gathered laces. And if they're in the bundles with other laces, I would put them in my, in the bundles that I sell or keep a few. You know, because sometimes I do use gathered lace. Everybody has their own aesthetic. Some people love to have wide like this or even bigger gathered lace along the edges of their pages, and I really don't. But it depends on your own aesthetic. And I think that takes care of the gathered lace. Woohoo, we're making progress today. I think I'm saving the crochet ones for last. I have these daisies, and I thought I had more, but apparently I've used enough of them <laughs> that my stash is diminished. Um, these are all, maybe not this one, these are all vintage. I may have some like this on a spool in my, that's another drawer that I have, is my spools of lace from Stampin' Up. So I might have more of this. I think I have 
Well, let me just go look. I want to see what kind of daisy trims I have. I have this one. So this is newer than this. This is vintage. And I think this is also one of these. And I don't know why it's off the spool. But it is. So these are fun to use uh, as a trim, just leaving it long, or to cut individual flowers off. Lots of things you can do with these. I'll probably be using them in my springtime journals. I just um, did a video showing some Easter supplies that I was going to put in my shop, that I am going to put in my shop. I just made the video and photographed the items. So I don't know if they'll be in the shop before or after you, this, you see this video. Probably before. But I cut a piece of this and a piece of this to go in that bundle. And then I forgot to show that in the video. But it's in the photographs. I'm going to leave this on this card, but I'm going to wind it the other way so it won't be so bulky. And I might put some of this in my shop because there's so much of it there. It's kind of dingy looking in parts. That just looks dirty. I didn't try washing it. I think I should probably leave that off the card and try washing it. If it comes clean, I'll put that piece in the shop, in, in a D-stash bundle. So what do you think about laces in journals? Do you use a lot of laces and trims in your journals? Do you have a big supply like I do? Do you um, save different types of lace? Um, I have also have boho, tr boho trims, which aren't lace, but they're trims. And I have fringes and braids and embroidered trims, which I'm pretty excited to get to this point where I can organize those because I like them and I want to see what all I have. I just got some new ones from Peggy in the Happy Mail. So I need to organize that. That drawer, it's a big drawer. Uh, and it is really full. It has embroidered trims and it, I'm just going to tuck this one. And it has um, braids and some fringes and stuff. And that drawer is really full. So I think I'll have to do some de-stashing there. I do not want to expand beyond the containers that I have designated. This one's pretty. This is unusual. I see these kinds of things a lot. It's kind of it's kind of neat that these are old and they're still making similar trims now. They didn't go out of style. These are shinier. I like that these are not shiny. And this is softer. put that pink one around there but I don't think I will right at this moment anyway. I'm putting these in the front with my shaped laces because I can cut little pieces off of them also. Alright, I have these that are bias tapes 
This is a wide bias tape, but they're patterned. And then this one is a very narrow bias tape, but it has the little crochet bits on it. Um, so I'm going to put them in here. Um, all right, I have some really special laces. So I'm just going to, this will go with my embroidered trims, I guess. Um, these are very special. These are vintage. I love this. I think this is my absolute favorite. And this is from Joann's. I bought it to go with a particular journal that I was going to make. And I still haven't done it. And this one is also vintage. So I'm just going to... Yeah, I guess I'll keep them in here. This is a uh, fabric that's embroidered. And this, I'm not sure where I'm going to put this. I think I'll put this in that other drawer with the braids and embroidered trim. And this is, I don't know what you call it, but it's a fabric and it's got this shiny stuff on it. So I think I'll keep that in this drawer. And then I have these. I got these all from in one box at a flea market. So what am I going to do with these? Well, keep them for one thing. Oh, look at these. These deserve to be on a prettier card than a piece of corrugated cardboard. I think this probably came from Joanne or Hobby Lobby, maybe both of these. Sometimes they have their spools of lace on sale, and sometimes they have the yardage on sale. And I think the reason I wound them around this way is because it's hard to have a card that's wide enough for them. Does this look like... Oh no, the other one was gathered. It does look like it, but one is gathered and one is not. Usually, when I'm there, it's the laces on the spools that are on sale. And I love these also. So let's get doing something, Diane. Just do something. Okay. This is a hand-cut card, but I'm just going to keep this. And I'll just put this on it. I think these two should be next to each other. If my camera shuts off, it's because my battery has been flashing for a little while and it finally said, okay, that's enough. I have so much of this, I should cut some off, but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm just going to put that whole thing in there. Alright, this is a beautiful shaped lace, so I'm going to put that with my shaped lace pieces. So I can cut sections of that off but I'm going to wrap it this way. It's kind of fun. It, it can be tedious and a little uh, frustrating because I don't know how to categorize some things and how to store them to the best advantage. But it's kind of fun to get my hands on them and you know actually see, again, what I have. I think the best part about organizing your stash is actually touching what you have and remembering it and thinking what you can do with it. <coughs> I used some of this in recent journal or I think I used it on an ephemera piece that I put in a journal. 
So yay, I used it. These are wide, but I did have some, I think I'm going to put this one in D-stash. I did have wide laces in the other drawer, but I don't think they were this wide. I'm going to put this in my wide lace drawer. I was going to put this with the daisies. I thought it would be a good idea to store this one right with the daisies and maybe I'll use it. Do you want to see any more of the lace organizing? I'll do the crochet, uh, the cotton ones, off camera, but I still have the wide ones and I have the, the braid and embroidered ones, uh, fringe and tassel. I don't have a whole lot of that, but I do have some. So do you, I don't know how much you want to see. Maybe I will video it, but I won't put it up unless you tell me you want it. I'm going to put this with the eyelets. I think I already have some of this in here. whole bunch of this at a rummage sale a few years back with uh, yellow too but I don't see it anymore so I must have must have used it all I did put a lot of it in my shop because there was so much I'm trying to get this in here where I can put it in without messing up ruffles um, this was just stuck in there. Can't have that. It gets lost. I should probably pull out all of my eyelets and go through them again. Just look at them and decide which ones I can de-stash because it's really too full. Once I'm done doing all of the lace and trims, I will have de-stash bundles, or at least one. I don't know how much I'm de-stashing. Okay. This is actually crochet, but I put it in with my laces because I can use it as an edge trim. So I think I'm going to leave it here, and I will add... Oh, this is when we get to the cotton stuff. Never mind. How many of these cards do I have left? Oh, I think I'm going to have to use some of my hand cut cards because I'm running low. I had this in blue. I think I used it. I think I wound it around a card and put it in with the other stuff. I'd like to keep them together.
This is um, different because it has the same fabric, just a different color, but this lace is gathered and on this one the fabric part is gathered. Very slight gather. So these have laces but a cotton element, cotton fabric element, so so does this one. I think I'll wrap this around here. It's not a very big piece. 